hello everyone welcome back in today's video we are going to learn the remaining problems that we have left out in exercise 5.3 of arithmetic progressions and from the next videos we'll be moving on to the next chapter that is trigonometry or else if you want any other chapter let me know so that i'll do it for you but uh, we have total of five to six problems that we have left and in that i'm explaining you four problems so that remaining two problems you can do them easily on your own i already i will i tell in every video that try to do some of the problems on your own so that your brain will get activated so that your brain will not get lazy okay in exam okay in your 10th board exam whatever the questions that you have learned maybe those questions only will be appearing okay but when you go to your higher classes when you go for competitive exams whatever you have learned will not be appearing in the exams right some different questions some numerical changes or some formula changes will be coming so if you are getting habituated to just listening all the time then you will find difficulty when you have to do problems on your own so some of the problems i'm leaving them for you okay now let us get into the topic today a contract on construction job specifies a penalty for delay of completion beyond a certain date as follows rupees 200 for the first day that means you are given a deadline you are given a particular date in order to complete a project okay suppose you are given 10 days time to complete a contract but you are not able to do that in the 10 days for for every one day the penalty will be increasing so for the first day that means for the 11th day you will be having 200 and after that 200 also if you have not completed then for the second day it will become 250 then for another day it will become 300 and for penal the penalty for each succeeding day being rupees 50 more than that of the preceding day that means whatever the penalty that is before day whatever the penalty that is there before the day that plus 50 you have to pay the next day okay that means on 11th day you have 200 rupees penalty but if you are not able to do on the 12th day you are paying 250 rupees on the 13th day you are paying 300 rupees on the 14th day you will be paying 350 rupees and so on in that way penalty will be increasing by rupees 50 each day if you don't do the work in time okay next how much money the contractor has to pay as penalty if he delayed the work by 30 days actually the work is to be completed in a, a particular time but he delayed the work by 30 days that means he have to pay the penalty for 30 days right so how the penalty is going to increase how much money he is going to pay that is what we have to find out right for the first day what is the amount he is paying 200 right for the second day he is paying 250 for the third day he is paying 300 and for so on up to he is doing the same thing for 30 days right this is for the first day this is for the second day this is for the third day and so on up to he is doing the same thing for 30 days right so what is that you are supposed to find out how much this complete entire money will add up to that is what he is asking right so here you can directly apply the formula of sn right so sn is equal to n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d you can go with this formula or you can also go with n by 2 into a plus l formula also okay now in order to substitute in the formula we want the values first right so let us write the values that are given in the question so first n n is nothing but he is doing uh, he is delaying the work by 30 days so n will be equal to 30 next a a is nothing but the first term what is the penalty that is being imposed on the first day that is 200 so a is equal to 200 again n we know d so what is d 250 minus 200 is 50 300 minus 250 is 50 everywhere you are getting the common difference as 50 so d is equal to 50 right so now if you substitute all these values in this formula let us see what you are going to get n is 30 right so 30 by 2 into 2 into a is again 200 plus n is 30 minus 1 into d is 50 so 2 ones are 215s are 2 into 200 will give you 400 plus 30 minus 1 will give you 29 into 50 into here you have 15 right so now 
15 into 400 plus 29 into 50 when you do you will be getting 1450 okay that is nothing but 15 into 400 plus 1450 is 1850 so when you multiply 15 and 1850 you will be getting the answer as 27750 okay 27750 that means you are paying 27750 rupees as penalty the, the contractor is paying 27750 rupees as penalty for delaying the work by 30 days okay clear I hope you understood how we did the problem. So if you want to write the steps for this problem, you can write in this way. Penalty for first day is equal to rupees 200. Penalty for second day is equal to rupees 250. Penalty for third day is equal to rupees 300. Okay. In that way, you can write the steps and you can easily solve this problem. So I hope you guys are clear about the problem. Let us move on to the next question now. Now in this question, a sum of rupees 700 is to be used to give 7 cash prizes to students of a school for their overall academic performance. That means a sum of rupees 700. The total amount is rupees 700 and we are distributing this 700 to 7 students. Okay. If each prize is rupees 20 less than its preceding price. Okay, if the preceding price is 100, then this price will become 80. Then the next price will become 60. The next one will become 40. The next one will become 20 and so on. In, this, in that way, okay. Then it's preceding price. Find the value of each of the price. Okay, so that is nothing but simply he is asking you to find out the arithmetic progression. Right? So it is an arithmetic progression or not, you may get a doubt. It is obviously arithmetic progression because every time rupees 20 is only being reduced right so now let us write the given data first sum is rupees 700 sum is equal to 700 that is nothing but sn is equal to 700 right used to give seven cash prizes he said so n will be equal to seven and what is the another thing that you are supposed to find out d what is d Suppose let us assume the first price is x. Okay. If the first price is x, then the second price is, will become x minus 20. Right. Third will become x minus 40. So what is the difference that you are seeing between each and every term? x minus 20 minus x. Minus x plus x will get cancelled. So you will get minus 20. So common difference d is equal to minus 20 you got. Right. Okay, clear. Now what is asking you to find out, find the value of each of the price. That means nothing but indirectly you are writing the arithmetic progression. Okay, so the general form of an AP is A, A plus D, A plus 2D, A plus 3D and so on. Right, but here you know the value of D, but you don't know the value of A. So let us find out the value of A now. Sn is equal to n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d. This is our Sn formula, right? Okay. In this, whatever the values we know, let us substitute those values. We know Sn is equal to 700. So, 700 is equal to n is equal to 7. 7 by 2 into 2 into a we don't know. So, a will be as it is plus another uh, and again n that is 7 minus 1 into d is minus 20 right now 7 ones are 7 hundreds are so you will get 100 is equal to 1 by 2 into 2a plus 7 minus 1 is 6 6 into minus 20 you can write it as 100 is equal to 1 by 2 into 2a plus 6 into minus 20 is minus 120 right when you send this 2 to this side, you will get 200 is equal to 2a minus 120. Okay. And then when you send this minus 120 to this side, you will get 200 plus 120 is equal to 2a. That is nothing but 320 is equal to 2a. From this, you will get a is equal to 160. Right. After getting a, you can write the remaining terms easily. So a is 160. Is that what we got? 160 comma 20 less than 160, the next price is 
140. The next price is again 20 less than this. That is 120. Again 20 less, 120 minus 20 will give you 100. Again 20 less will give you 80. Again 20 less will give you 60. Till now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 prizes we have given. The last one is 40. So these are the values of the prizes given. In this way you can calculate. Okay? Fine? Clear? So I hope you guys are clear about this. Very easy problem. You can easily solve this. The next is a spiral is made up of successive semicircles. Okay, he's selling semicircles with centers alternatively at A and B. See, one of the center is at A and another semicircle uh, center is at B. If you draw one semicircle using the center as A, the other will be drawn using as B in that way. Okay, S starting with A of radius 0 0.5 centimeter, 1.0 centimeter, 1.5 centimeter, 2.0 centimeter and so on. As shown in the figure okay what is the total length of the spiral made of 13 consecutive semicircles is telling okay that what is that you are supposed to find out now total length total or sum or uh, complete in these cases you have to go with sn formula okay sn is equal to n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into D. simply you have to go with this formula but you have to know the value of each and every thing right so what is n he said 13 consecutive semicircles so n value will be equal to 13 automatically so n is equal to 13 clear a so what is going to be the value of a a is nothing but what the first term what is asking you what is the total length length is nothing but in for how we say perimeter for rectangles and squares for this we say circumference right perimeter of a circle or perimeter of a semicircle is nothing but its circumference so what is the circumference formula for semicircle it is pi r so you have to add the semi uh, circumference of each and every semicircle okay circumference of each and every semicircle you have to add in order to get the complete length because it is going in this way you know so first you have to add this circumference then again this semicircle circumference again this semicircles again this sum in that way you have to add the circumferences of 13 semicircles right now see what is the formula for circumference pi r now what is the radius of the first one it is 0 0.5 centimeters what is the radius of the second one it is 1.0 centimeters so first let us write an ap which shows the circumferences of all the semicircles so the first one will be the first radius is 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 pi comma 1 pi this is because this is just pi into r pi into 0 0.5 pi into 1 pi into 1.5 like that 1.5 pi comma 2.0 pi and so on in this what is the first term 0 0.5 pi right so a will be equal to 0 0.5 pi again n is equal to 13 same the same we have written here and d d is nothing but what 1 pi minus 0 0.5 pi as pi is common put pi aside and when you subtract 1 minus 0 0.5 you will get 0 0.5 so the common difference is equal to 0 0.5 right now we will go with this formula so sn is equal to n what is n 13 13 by 2 into 2 into 0 0.5 pi plus again n is 13 minus 1 into d is 0 0.5 right so 13 by 2 into 2 into 0 0.5 is nothing but 1 if you want you can also calculate that you will get the same 1 pi plus 13 minus 1 is 6 6 into 0 0.5 right so 13 by 2 into pi plus here 6 into 0 0.5 is 3 because uh, 6 into 0 0.5 when you do you will get the same sorry here 13 minus 1 is 12 no I'm, I'm really sorry 12 12 into 0 0.5 will give you 6 right so 13 by 2 into pi plus 6 you i'm sorry we have made a mistake i'm really sorry here the common difference is actually 0 0.5 pi 
we have taken it as only 0 0.5 so here it will be 0 0.5 pi here also 0 0.5 pi here it will be 6 pi okay i'm sorry for that then it will be 13 by 2 into pi plus 6 pi will give you 7 pi okay so that is 13 by 2 into 7 into pi is he has given pi is equal to 22 by 7 because uh, some people will be taking pi as 3.141 some people will be taking as 22 by 7 so in order to avoid that confusion he is given pi as 22 by 7 in the question itself so you can take 22 by 7 7 7 will get cancelled 2 ones are 2 elevens are so when you multiply 13 into 11 you will get 143 143 centimeter is the total length of the spiral okay in this way you can solve this problem and i'm sorry for the mistake which i have made there okay now we'll go to the another problem the last problem with this we are going to end this chapter the next question is 200 logs are stacked in the following manner following manner is this diagram uh, i tried something don't laugh by looking at it okay so here we have 20 logs in the bottom row that means in the bottom row he is telling we have 20 logs 19 in the next row from in the nine, 19 in the top row and 18 in the next row that means in this third row we are having 18 and so on in that way in each and every row one log is being reduced okay in how many rows 200 logs are placed and how many logs are in the top row whatever the top most row we are getting how many logs are there in that top row and how many rows we have to arrange in order to get 200 he is asking you okay so you have to find out two values in this question first let us write the corresponding ap he is telling 20 in the bottom row in the next it has become 19 the next it has become 18 and so on right so this is the ap that we have written and now from this ap what you can write actually what there is that you are supposed to find out in how many rows how many rows is nothing but you are supposed to find out the value of n okay and what is that you know a is equal to 20 the first term and d is equal to 19 minus 20 that is equal to minus 1 right and what is the another thing that you are given 200 logs first only he gave 200 logs that means you are adding all the logs then you are getting the answer as 200 that is nothing but sn is equal to 200 right now what is that you are supposed to find out the value of n that is very easy so sn is equal to n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d okay what is the value of n here we don't know the value of n so n will be as it is into 2 into a is 20 okay plus n minus 1 into d is minus 1 okay and this is completely is equal to sn is 200 okay oh, done send this 2 to this side you will get 2 into 20 is 40 plus when you multiply this minus 1 inside you will get minus n plus 1 is equal to when you send this 2 to that side you will get 400 right okay into n now multiply this n inside 40 n minus n square plus n is equal to 400 you will get minus n square plus 41 n is equal to 400 this you can write it as n square minus 41 n minus 400 is equal to 0 sorry plus 400 is equal to 0 so this is a quadratic equation that is formed you all know how to solve a quadratic equation that we have completed in the previous chapter of quadratic equations right so when you factorize it you will get like n square minus 25 n minus 16 n plus 400 is equal to 0 okay you can write it as actually uh, I have written in the reverse order so when you take n we'll write in the perfect order wait n square minus 16 n minus 25 n plus 400 is equal to 0 when you take n common you will get n minus 16 and here when you take 25 common also you will get n minus 16 right so you can write it as n minus 25 into n minus 16 is equal to 0 from this you can write n minus 25 is equal to 0 or n minus 16 is equal to 0 and you can write n is equal to 25 or n is equal to 16 when you send this to this side okay 
but what is the doubt that we have here is whether n is equal to 25 or whether n is equal to 16 that means the number of rows are 25 or the number of rows are equal to 16 okay now let us check so if n is equal to 25 what we are getting and if n is equal to 16 what we are getting if n is equal to 25 a n will be equal to a plus n minus 1 into d right so a is again 20 we already know plus n is 25 minus 1 into again minus 1 so 20 plus 25 minus 1 is 24 into minus 1 that means we are getting 20 minus 24 is equal to minus 4 is negative value possible no negative value is not possible because what is this this is nothing but the number of logs that we are placing on the topmost row number of logs cannot be negative it can be either 0 or it can be a positive number so this is wrong let us go what happens if n is equal to 16 n is equal to 16 then a n will be equal to the same formula you are going to substitute so 20 plus here n is 16 minus 1 into d is again minus 1 so 20 plus 16 minus 1 is 15 into minus 1 so 20 minus 15 will give you 5 so when n is equal to 16 you are getting 5 5 is a positive integer right so that is the reason why n is equal to 16 is only correct n is equal to 25 is not correct that means if n is equal to 16 that is nothing but the last row is 16 so the number of rows is equal to 16 right and number of logs in last row is equal to 5 right this is all about this problem and that's all for this video if you have still any doubts or if you have not uh, understood anything let me know i'll explain it again uh, this chapter is not that hard and it is also not that easy if you understand it is very 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 easy for you to solve this because it is completely based on only two three formulas and calculations are also very much important in this chapter so in the next i will start trigonometry and if you are if you want any other chapter let me know so that i will start that chapter also i'll be running two chapters parallelly if you have liked this video like if you have understood whatever i've explained in this video hit the like button and share with your friends if you have any comments let me know i will in the comments or any suggestions i'll let me know in the comments i'll reply to each and every comment and i'll definitely try to do what you have asked okay and if you have not yet subscribed to my channel do subscribe and share with your friends and if you want to uh, have a look at the previous videos of this chapter or uh, the other chapters of grade 10 math i'll give you the link of the playlist in the description you can go there check and you can watch those previous videos okay thank you for watching this video guys